Laura. Now, the federal election, May 21, we know that neither the coalition or Labor could be able to form government in their own right. Independent and minor parties become kingmakers. Sitting Liberal MPs in blue ribbon seats are being challenged by pro-climate independence, backed by the Climate 200 movement, which stands for Climate Change Action. Joining me live is the independent candidate for Hughes, Georgia Steele. Welcome back to the program, Georgia. This is a, a cost of living campaign mm -hmm. now. Can you tell us what the official RBA cash rate is at the moment? The official RBA cash rate is below 1%. I can tell you that, Laura. Zero. Um, and there's obviously yeah, Anthony. Yeah, there's obviously moves that. to moves to raise it. Oh well, I'm I'm glad that I could. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you going to do for the cost of living? Well, I think we spoke about this a little bit in our last chat, Laura. Um, the cost of living is a very difficult issue to address in a short term way. Uh, what we need to do is to undertake some real structural change in government and we need to undertake economic structural change. And I've been advocating for a transition to a renewable energy economy. It will improve the cost of living. I know that it won't last, it won't happen quickly, but it will happen. Um, short term cash splashes in response to uh, immediate cost of living pressures won't do anything to help our economy in the long term. Yeah, but I guess people are struggling to pay their bills now. We see inflation on the rise, wages not keeping up. What is an independent going to do about that? Well, independents can hold government to account in the way that they always have in the history of Australian Parliament. Um, I will be a community representative for the people of Hughes. I will listen to their concerns and cost of living is indeed one of the concerns that they raise. So uh, independence on the crossbench can keep those issues at the front of mind of government, of both of the major parties. They're not complementary though, what you're talking about. You're talking about stronger climate change action. You're saying, mm -hmm. you know, that will help with cost of living, uh, not immediately, but maybe in the medium term. But mm. in the immediate uh, future, Look at what's happened in Europe. They are having huge cost of living pressures because of energy and renewables yes. aren't making life cheaper right now. Yes, and they're having huge cost of living pressures because of energy from fossil fuels, Laura. It's precisely the problem that so I would seek to that? solve. What do you mean? Well, there's a, there's a war in Europe. Um, gas and oil is extremely hard to come by. So they're, they're the cost of living pressures that are occurring in Europe. We've seen the effects of it here in Australia with, with huge increases at the petrol pump. Um, that's one of the short-term cash splashes that the government sought to turn around in their mini budget in March. Yeah, um, that, that is true. But, but what's the alternative? We're talking about the next term and you want to be elected f for the next term. So mm -hmm. how do you get those that cost of living pressure down while still spruiking a very ambitious climate change target, emissions reductions target? Yeah, well, um, the climate reduction target, the emissions reduction target that I'm spruiking is exactly the emission reductions target that a lot of that a lot of people are advocating at the moment. You know, it's what the Business Council of Australia is advocating. It's state governments are trying to work towards um, the Climate Council. Uh, it's absolutely nothing new that we have to move towards a transformation in our economy towards a renewables economy. Um, it will help with cost of living pressures in the medium term. And in the shorter term, of course, um, we really need to look at the, the wastage of the current government, the way they spend money. Um, there are problems with rorts. There are, um, we, we're looking, we're nudging a $1.2 trillion debt by 2026. Um, we have a government that's the second highest taxing government of the last 30 years. Um, I think that there are immediate efficiencies that can be made in the way that the government runs the economy. Do you think Labor's the one to make those efficiencies? I think that a, a strong independent crossbench can hold either major party to account. Isn't that having a bit of a delusion of grandeur? Sorry to be rude, but I mean, you're, you're one person, you don't control a whole government. Well, in 2010, we had three independents who held the balance of power. Um, it's, that's very recent history. And, you know, obviously formed a minority government with Julia Gillard, which then went on to be the most productive government in Australian parliamentary history. Most productive whether you like, on whether what you... measure of success are you basing that? Passing legislation. Passing legislation. So is passing legislation equal to, you know, better life, more productive government? It can be. 
they're doing the work. They're, they were creating policy. Um, the independence on the crossbench during that period of government, whether you agree with the policies that were introduced and the, and the legislation that was passed or not, were very productive. It was marred by absolute chaos. That's just not true, Laura. It's absolutely not true. Remember what happened that, with the that Speaker, minority with government Craig under uh, under Julia Gillard. That minority government got us the Royal Commission inst into institutional uh, sexual abuse. It got us the NDIS, one of the you know most comprehensive reforms that this country's seen in the last twenty or thirty years. Really important things were done during that government. I don't right. think that the current government can say that they've achieved anywhere near that much in their three terms of majority government.